as you guys can see, is actually pretty simple. It really doesn't sound that great melodically, but it's really a great exercise to create dexterity between your left hand or your fretting hand fingers. One, two, three. So welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Derek Bennett from Bass Nation Academy, an online bass education school. I'll put the link in the description if you guys are interested in taking your bass playing to that next level. We have tons of material there, lessons, courses, live stream classes, blah, blah, blah. It's a ton of stuff. So go check it out. I'll let you be the judge of that. If you haven't subscribed and, and you're new here, click that red subscribe button. So every time we upload a video to this channel, you'll be notified and won't miss a thing. So let's jump right into it. As a beginner, you need to be able to understand the importance between the four finger per fret rule. It's going to help you in the long run, trust me. But just a side note, that's not necessarily set in stone that you have to play four fingers per fret because there's gonna be some times where you go outside of that formation and you may have to play a scale or an arpeggio or an exercise. Something like that where you have to branch out of that four finger per fret. So this is merely just an exercise. So for beginner exercises like this that deal with dexterity, I like repetition. Repetition is always key when you're trying to build a muscle or actually build a routine or a habit. Repetition is key. So we're moving this line chromatically, meaning one half step at a time and diagonally across the fretboard, across the strings. So the first starting point will be F on this first fret. The next starting point will be B on the next string. The next starting point will be F again on the D string. And then the next starting point after that will be B will be B, <laughs> sounds funny, on the next string, G. So once we are done with that, we're actually gonna move it diagonally the other way. Okay, so let me demonstrate. Diagonal. That's also called a tritone, the space between this note and that note, but we'll go over that in a later date. So. Just to make sure you're alternating your fingers one and two, one and two, one and two, and your notes are coming out clean, clear, and precise. Very important that every single note comes out nice and clear to the ear. So, where we left off, B, move it up chromatically, one, two, three, four. Now after that, this is where we move diagonally the opposite way, and up. So we're gonna move to the G on the D string. So, and then start from there. Okay, so our notes are gonna be B, chromatic, G, chromatic, diagonal again, and this is where you land on the E flat or the D sharp, and then diagonal again, and this is where you will land on the B. Okay, you see what I mean? So I'm just reversing or flipping this same exercise over and over again until I get to this 13th fret up here. So let's move it all together, or let's do it all together. Opposite way, diagonal. So when we get to this point, we're gonna start the exercise over just like we were starting here on F and moving up diagonally. So we start on B, next up F, next B, next F. And that's the end of the exercise. What would be really cool, you can start off with this at first, but what would be really cool if you actually descended this exercise or went backwards with it starting on the same point. But you can do that when you're ready. Descending is a lot harder than ascending because your fingers aren't shaped to go backwards. So you really have to put some time in and some work in and descending this exercise. And you'll find it to be a little bit more tough going backwards versus because your fingers usually want to do one two three four one two three four one two three four not four three two one even if you do that on your hand right now four three two one it feels a little bit weird but anyway so that's why you have to work on it so i would suggest that you start this exercise ascending then when you're done with that or comfortable with that, you can actually descend this exercise. The same exact way we're gonna move diagonally. So we're starting with the fourth finger, 
diagonally to the G or to the D, excuse me. Next to the A flat. Next to the D. Now we're going to move up a string, but what we're going to do is our fourth finger is going to land a whole step away and one string down. So now the D on your E string actually acts like your starting point now. See what I mean? So D, chromatic down. Now from D, go diagonally. It's actually a major third. And then now you're just taking that diagonal point from your pinky, right? Or from your fourth finger. Who says pinky? Do you call it pinky still? I still call it pinky from time to time. Anyway, very interested. Let me know what you call it in the comments. Uh, <laughs> fourth finger, pinky, either way. And B sure to not lift up that hand so much. I have an exercise called the seesaw exercise. If you want to check that out, I'll probably link it here somewhere. Um, but the seesaw exercise will help you not lift and flail your fingers away from the fretboard, which is very, very, very important not to do or not to develop that habit. And when you're starting off as a beginner or just doing beginner exercises, this is a time to tackle that bad habit uh, so you can get it nice, clean, clear, and precise and nice and close to the fretboard. I'm rambling today. Sorry, guys. Well, to some of you, I ramble all the time, but oh well. So that is the exercise, guys. We're moving backwards. We're moving forward, first of all, and then moving backwards. Now our fourth finger is our starting point. Diagonal, diagonal. Now our fourth finger is still our starting point. Now we're moving diagonal here to the F sharp, or to, sorry, to the G sharp. Diagonal here to the D. Diagonal here to the A flat. Okay. And then we end up, we end up right back where we started. Okay. So I'll try to have this written out. I mean, it's not necessarily a written out type of thing. It's mainly just kind of memorizing this pattern for the shape of the bass guitar. So like I've already said several times in this lesson, make sure you know so coming out clean, clear, and precise. If you have any questions and you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button before I say this next thing. Comment below if you have any more questions or comments or suggestions or anything like that. Check out the Bass Nation Academy, and I'll check you guys in the next one. Peace.